Hey, it's Greg here with MaritimeGardening.com and it's time for the first garden tour of the year, 2023, it's April. Brought to you by my sponsor, Vessi Seeds. If you're going to get free shipping on your seeds, use my coupon code GAVS23 uh, and order your seeds online from Vessi Seeds. And that's how you do that. I'll have a little ad, little uh, promo thing at the end of this video for more details. Also, you can check the description box of this video. So, it's uh, around the middle of April right now and uh, few things growing in the garden, few things planted, but still it's quite cold and uh, you know there's a lot of things we just can't put in the ground yet, but we've got a few things going on. But the main thing I want to show in this video is just all the changes, the complete reorganization of this garden, which is like 99%, well maybe 95% complete right now. Uh, last year, <clears throat> towards the end of the gardening season, I just decided everything has to be moved. I don't like where anything is. This needs to be completely redone. And it was an overwhelming project and I got a good portion of it done uh, before freeze up. And I've spent the last month or so, ever since things thawed out, uh, trying to finish it up. So with no further, further ado, let's go have a look and let me show you everything that's happening here. <laughs> so here we are in the old gold, the original goldfish pond. The fish are still in and I haven't moved them yet. I don't have the new pond ready yet. And I want it perfectly ready before I, I move them. And even when I move them, I'll probably move half See how they go for a week, move another half, because the long-term goal is to fill this in. Because uh, you don't want a hole full of water uh, with no fish in it, otherwise it'll just get full of mosquitoes and stuff like that. <laughs> um, anyway, you can't see them because of the glare off the water. But all the gold fish are down there, swimming around. Um, they survive the winter just fine. All right. Now, first major change to the garden. I don't know if you can tell, but I took this apart and put it back together again. <laughs> I had it like in divided into like separate beds and I was like, why do I have this in separate beds? It's just one big bed. I can I can just I can plant different things and then it doesn't have to be separate beds It just uses less wood and easier to put together Right all this is just pegs in the ground and Dead tree logs with soil in it uh, There's nothing planted here yet. This is going to be mostly potatoes. I think I've also been kind of uh, Vicious so I mean I got a tree here I got, a, I got a birch right there. I sort of lopped the top off of it and there was a big spruce here Which my wife was very upset, but I killed that <laughs> Just so that this garden can get more More Sun right so I can this is the little bed outside of my garden I normally grow potatoes here, but I also try to grow squash and the squash grows But I've noticed every year the squash grows a little less well because there's less Sun <laughs> so I've, I've reduced the number of trees uh, right next to this garden. Hopefully it'll get more sun and be more productive. You can see there must have been some garlic in there because these are some garlic greens. Um, I'll probably just pull them because this is not supposed to be a garlic garden. Uh, I've grown garlic here from time to time. It just doesn't grow as well as it does in other beds where the sun is fantastic, right? You want any sort of onion, garlic, onion, whatever. You want it to get as much sun as you can get if you want to get good size. Anyway, Moving and I'm going to change my angle here because the sun's sort of directly in my eyes here, but just a quick scan over the garden, right? It's just looking good. I don't know what the best way to show you everything is. Um, this bed I've sort of redone, added some new logs, made the bed, brought that bed this way a little bit more because I got all this spice here that's sort of being unused. And I thought, why not make this bed a little bit wider this way, right? Um, so this is going to be... Uh, uh, Swiss chard, onions, and Brussels sprouts. I think I got Brussels sprouts planted under this here. I don't know if they've germinated yet. It looks like some of them might be up. Um, yeah, it looks like some of them might have germinated. Um, so it's a bit early for planting things like that. I mean, if you watch my planting schedule video, I plan to do a shorter video, shorter version. I did a podcast on my whole planting schedule idea based on the dandelion uh, but that's like 45 minutes long I plan to do a, sort of a short version of that so stay tuned for that I'll be doing that soon but anyway the idea is that there's some things you plant when they when you see dandelion greens there's some things you plant when you see the yellow dandelion flowers and there's some things you plant when you see the white dandelion flowers that's that's it that's this uh, that's the schedule <laughs> so the whole thing's just based on dandelions um, anyway Brussels sprouts are something you should plant when you see the yellow flowers but under a little you know most most of these things you can plant them a bit earlier 
if they're under some sort of protected microclimate like that. Um, so that's Brussels sprouts, and that'll be the Swiss chard over there. Um, nothing planted here yet. This, if you remember last fall, I planted some winter rye. This is the winter rye. Okay, so I don't, you know, <laughs> this is just continue to grow. The idea is for this bed to be potatoes and peas. So I've got to do some stuff to get it ready for that. I got to do a whole video on that. I had to deal with this because I'm not going to till this in because I don't have a tiller. <laughs> but I got an idea how I'm going to make this all work. Um, so stay tuned for that. A relatively low energy way to turn this <laughs> basically lawn <laughs> into a nice garden. We'll see how it works. Bit of an experiment playing with this. I love the idea of just throwing a few seeds down and it basically turns into a mulch. Uh, I would have thrown these seeds down in um, uh, September or October, right? Uh, but uh, but then you get all this stuff growing. <laughs> it doesn't. The winter doesn't kill it, right? It survives the winter, so you got to kill it somehow. Otherwise, you're just going to have a lawn. Um, strangely, I planted the same winter rye seeds here, and none of them grew. Because as you can see, I've got, you see this hole, right? And this hole here, right? Something, some rodent, and there's a hole over there. <laughs> now there's some rodent using this as an access. I planted lettuce here weeks ago. It looks like some of them have germinated. But, I mean, if I have a chipmunk problem, which is what I think I have, they might just be eating those. Chipmunks are a terribly cute little animal, but they're uh, kind of indiscriminate in terms of their the way they treat your garden. Uh, this, uh, what's this called? Uh, French sorrel is growing great, coming in good. And this bloody dock coming in nice. I also started some over here. Uh, the bloody dock went to seed a year ago. And it just started coming up in the, randomly in the walking path. So I moved these last, I can, that must have been September or October. Right, so I got this pretty little bloody duck garden just mulched with smashed up rotten wood. Uh, this garden I moved a bunch of uh, Egyptian walking onions into it. A lot of them didn't survive the winter. I may have planted them too late. But I have some that made it, and so they will propagate. And the long-term goal is for this to be uh, just an Egyptian walking onion garden. I think like a 4x5 garden of Egyptian walking onions is all you're going to need, personally. <laughs> um, garlic are coming in great over here, as you can see, right? And for those that, you know, have been watching over time, um, they, and a lot of people that planted garlic where I live, uh, we had a very, very warm fall. So a lot of people's garlic grew and then died when the winter happened, right? So most of the garlic in this bed was about six inches high when everything froze. And so, you know, I had a lot of people asking me, will my, will my garlic be okay? And I said, yeah, they'll probably be okay. And yeah, mine are fine, right? Everything's coming up fine, right? They're all doing just fine, right? Just nice, strong, healthy garlic. The odd spot where I got two growing, look what happened there. Uh, anyway. They're doing fine. All the garlic are doing fine. Uh, a few months ago, I planted some, uh, what's it called? Austrian ground pea or something like that. Those are coming up here. Um, it was just a little experiment. I, I wanted to see how they worked. I think I might use some of these as a green mulch in um, September, right? Uh, for the winter. Um, but, you know, I got other plans for this bed. This is all going to have to be uh, taken on. As you can see, I still got some... <laughs> The parsnips growing from last year that didn't come out of the ground. You always miss it. When you grow parsnips, you always miss a couple. Usually little tiny ones, you don't notice them. And they come back the next year. You pull those, otherwise they'll go to seed. Right. Um, and I can't remember if these were a hybrid variety or an open pollinated variety. So, you just pull them. Um, under this dome here, I got some, some spinach growing. I don't know if you can see it, but that's spinach right there. Right, so that's coming in okay. That's one spinach bed anyway. Uh, this bed is nothing. There's nothing growing here yet. <laughs> there's nothing growing anywhere here. That There's some more winter rye. In this bed I planted um, parsnips weeks ago. Boy, that's quite the hole there. We've got some sort of rodent that made that hole. And generally the trick is you put a little 
mouse trap out with some peanut butter if you're okay with killing stuff. If you're not okay with killing stuff, you just learn to live with it making tunnels in your garden, which is another, you can do that too. <laughs> do whatever is good for works for you. Anyway, this is a parsnip garden, right? They haven't germinated yet, but they're all planted. Uh, there's nothing planted here yet. Rhubarb, you can see, starting to poke up. This bed needs a little bit more mulch. As you can see, there's some of the soil's gone bare. But uh, yeah, rhubarb <coughs> starting to come out, starting to come out to play, that's good. Uh, I had a bed here. This was where the uh, grapes were growing last year. Uh, and I had a, like this sort of a waste of space. The bed just followed the fence and I thought, why not bring it out and make it bigger? So I've got parsnips planted here for this year. We'll see how that does. I had a giant grape plant that went all the way from that green bed all the way over to where, it, where that little bend there. It was an enormous grape plant and it would cast shade on this entire area of the garden. And so there was, I was really limited in what I could grow. So I think by removing that, I should be able to grow some parsnips, right? Because they, they start growing in April and they grow all the way until November, <laughs> right? So even though this isn't the sunniest spot, I'm hoping they get enough sun over all that time to grow. Uh, similarly, I augmented the bed here, right? We did a bit more work uh, digging up the pond and stuff like that, so this is incomplete, but this is just extra soil that I found from other parts of the garden, um, which I've put down here, right? This will probably be potatoes. Uh, for those that have been following along, every year I have a problem with my raspberries where little bunny, little tiny baby bunny rabbits find a way through my fence no matter what I seem to do. <laughs> and they, they cut my raspberry plants off at about a foot and a half, two feet high. So what I've done is I've added a second layer of defense. I had a fence inside the fence, right? My entire garden is fenced, but I put a fence around the raspberries to keep them out of there. I'm hoping uh, that the raspberries will actually be able to grow without being cut off, <laughs> cut down by uh, baby rabbits. Uh, so we'll see how that goes. Uh, these beds are still coming along. This is actually a strawberry bed. You can see in some places, that's a mound, that's a mole mound. But anyway, the strawberries are here. Right here, there's one. Right, they're starting to emerge, right? You can see the new growth. Right, that's last year's growth. The foliage can kind of survive the winter on a mulch like this, but this is the new growth here, right? So they'll find their way through this uh, uh, leaf mulch. And um, I mean, they're called strawberries, but leaves are a fine mulch for, uh, Leaves and grass clippings and stuff like that are fine for strawberries. Uh, this bed here, I've made it bigger than it was last year. I sort of uh, I made it longer and bigger. Okay, uh, why not, right? I mean, you'll see as we go along, I changed the entire end of the garden over there. And I lost about 12 garden beds. So as a result, I've been trying to make everything on this side of the garden bigger. <laughs> And I've got even plans this fall to do more. I've just done enough for one season. Uh, here's a bed where I planted, uh, I think, lettuce. Lettuce or spinach recently, right? This will pr eventually probably be tomatoes or something like that. But tomatoes aren't going in the ground for a couple months, right? It's a nice sunny spot. And we got more garlic over here. It's incredible. <laughs> Whatever leaf mulch I use, it must have had a lot of maple trees. That's a maple tree. That was a maple tree. <laughs> now it's mulch. <laughs> anyway, I have to... Or just pluck those, but yeah, the, the garlic in this bed are doing, doing just fine, and uh, you know, the mulch is helping everything except that it's <laughs> the mulch is <laughs> full of maple trees. But I mean, all you got to do is just go through and scrunch it up like that, right? It's not a big deal. Something I got to remember to do before the black flies show up. There's nothing worse than weeding when there's flies pond so you can see we've done a lot of work with the pond a bit of shade here it's kind of hard to see but what i've done is i've and i'm going to do a video on this so I'll, I'll just keep this really brief but what i've done is i used the natural clay and some gravel and some of the walking path sand and portland cement at a ratio of about six to one 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 good shovel full of portland cement two sand two clay, 
two rocks, <laughs> right? I mix that up and I troweled it on about three inches thick. And this is strong enough to walk on, right? Just without cracking it. And before I troweled that on, I put chicken wire down to, to sort of almost act like a rebar, a reinforcement, right? So there's a chicken wire all the way along here. And then I put the concrete over it. And the idea is that when this fills up, it's not full right now, but when this fills out, it'll prevent the water from seeping out this way, right? It'll hold the water, because water seeps in. You can see how it's shiny right there, right? Water seeping in from that hill. And it's also trickling in from this drain I made, right? Right, I cut a trench. You can't see right now, but there's a, a trench, uh, a trench all along that garden bed and gravel and perforated pipe and it comes out here okay and there's just always a very slow steady trickle of water coming out of there right you can see right now right water right and when it rains you can see that water coming in but the you know really the idea is that water seeps in through the hill i mean it comes along the top but most of it comes after it rains, it sort of seeps out through the sides. So this here side of the pond is all gonna be wild. Just weeds and different things growing, right? Foliage. And I got a shallow part of the pond here where I'm hoping I can get some different kind of pond plants and cattails and whatever growing. And then it's deep right there, right? Um, and this concrete, which doesn't look, you know, just not the most beautiful thing in the world. But when it's all done, my plan is to sort of have moss growing part way up it, right? So it won't look quite so uh, industrial, <laughs> right? And hopefully this will just hold a good amount of water and give the, the fish a, a great place to live. That's the idea anyway, right? We just a few more things to do today. I'm going to work on this a little bit today. Uh, all these new beds, this is where the old pond had been, right? And this is where the trees were, right? So these will now be very... Before I had, a, I had a tree right there, and I had a tree right there, and I had all these bushes along here. And it would cast shade on that side of the garden, because this way is south. Okay, so now this whole part of the garden, which was unproductive, will now be very productive, because it's a really, really sunny spot. Alright, now this bed isn't in place yet because this pile of soil here was an asparagus garden and some of the asparagus are here <laughs> but I can't see them yet they haven't emerged from the soil so when the asparagus emerge I'll pluck pluck them out move them into this bed right and there'll be a bed here which will be a dedicated asparagus bed right probably grow something else with the asparagus I haven't decided what Right, so once the asparagus start coming up, and they're gonna, there's asparagus in other parts of my garden too, like they're, they're basically little little bits and pieces of asparagus all over the place. I'm gonna consolidate it all into here, so it'll all be in one place. And it should go pretty good here now because it's not <coughs> underneath a tree, right? Because there was a big apple tree right here, right? That basically, I cut that tree down because it never grew well. It was one of those trees that has five different types of apples on it. And it was just, it was too big and too old to move and it was in the wrong place so now it's firewood <laughs> sort of thing right um it's a shame but it was basically casting shade on an entire area just in the wrong place right this used to be the edge of the garden there used to be a fence there used to be a fence right here but i moved the fence back right so that's why all that had to be moved um so now we can see the part of the garden the line right where we've got let me show you this from the other angle Right, the idea is that we've got the vegetable garden, right, sand, and the fruit garden, mulch, for a number of reasons. Not the least of which, you know, these apple trees and these blueberry bushes, they all produce leaves, right? It's better for the leaves to be falling on mulch than to be falling on sand, right? The idea of using the sand in these pathways is that it, it creates a sort of barren a lifeless desert-like effect in the pathways then each bed is a kind of oasis right so the sand is relatively weed free right 
But if you've got leaves and all kinds of other stuff on your sand, eventually your sand starts turning into soil and weeds start growing in it, right? Um, so over here we just have the wood chips. So once every couple of years I have to replenish the wood chips, but that's a lot easier than replenishing the wood chips for an entire thing like this. Right, with sand you don't you just don't have to replenish it nearly as often. And sand costs money, but it lasts, right? And it's uh, it, another advantage of the sand is that it holds a lot of heat. If, if heat's a thing you need, it, it can get, you know, we're, it's a problem here. We need more heat sort of thing, believe it or not. So um, the sand really helps warm the garden up uh, in the early months, right? And it keeps it warmer in the fall. There's lots of days I can come out. I walk across my lawn and it's a relatively nice day. And then I come into the garden and you can just feel the heat, right? Um, so yeah, all the blueberries that were growing in a kind of thicket here, they're all in a relatively small area. Um, now they're in a now they're in a line, okay. And I actually gave like five plants away. <laughs> I still have like an entire row of blueberries, right? So this row is going uh, the row goes um, north south, right? Uh, this direction is sorry. The row goes east west. <coughs> this direction is south, right? So. We've got the sun shining in this direction. All of these beds are eventually going to be fruit, right? This is garlic right now, and this, this was parsnips last year. But eventually, these three beds, I'm actually going to move them and reorient them so I can have maybe four or five beds along here, right? But that's another video, and I'll talk about that another time. <laughs> but for this season, everything just is where it is. But eventually, this is all going to be... Uh, uh, strawberries right you can see nice sunny spot look these strawberries are already coming up right these are the strawberries that were growing where the pond is right they I had a strawberry garden in that pond spot they never did well because it's not a good sunny spot this is a good sunny spot and the strawberries are responding to that and they're very happy strawberries <laughs> Okay, so eventually I'll have more strawberries, right? This will all be strawberries. Okay, so I'll just have all my own strawberries. I don't have to drive or pay some outrageous cost to get them. Um, this is the um, Lingonberry Garden, and I had to move the bed. This bed was over here, and I moved the whole bed over a bit, so I had to, I had to pluck plant, plants out of here and stick them in over here. So they probably won't be that productive this season. But most of them are in the same place, and I'm hoping that this will this will be the year. Now that the lingonberry bush is not in the shade of a big apple tree, um, and in the shade of my fully mature asparagus plants, which are like three feet high once they complete growing, right now that it's got all this nice sun, I think the lingonberries will uh, be more productive and do better. I got to replace some of this moss mulch. Um, lingonberries sort of naturally grow in a sort of acidic boggy type soils so it made sense to me to just go in the woods here and pull some mulch off some of the or pull some uh, moss off some of the rocks and just you know mulch this with moss and you know, i planted these a number of years ago they get bigger every single year and they're doing great um this is the uh the grape plant that was growing way over there so i've planted it here i have all the materials i need to build the trellis I just have to get around to doing that, and I'll, get, I'll do that really soon. But the trellis will run this way, and it'll run that way, okay? So, for a certain part of the year, the lingonberries will actually be in the shade of the foliage of the grape plant. Well, there's just no other place to put the grape plant, so it's got to be here. Um, but there's a good portion of the growing season where it just won't be a thing, right? So I think these will still get pretty good sun right and i think they're still going to grow great and remember these are a forest plant so they can handle they don't need like full sun all day it's just they just do better with that right anyway i think it'll all work out fine and this is the only place i could put my grapes <laughs> they had to go somewhere and this is where they are um so that trellis is going to run this way as well and then the only, only other thing i grow in here is some uh, that's a pear tree that's a pear tree and that's an apple tree okay so i've ordered another apple tree from bessie's this one that i moved i mean we violently pulled this out of the ground and violently put it back in the ground 
but it seems to be budding out okay right it seems to be just fine we moved this in i don't remember it was late september early october something like that i mean these buds are healthy right i've done a couple tests where i try to bend I mean, basically if you if you bend and break the branch and it snaps then the tree's dead right but it's it's bendy it's green it's alive right so the tree survived just fine because we moved it i don't know you know how productive it's going to be this year but one apple tree is not enough this is called a sweet 16. so i ordered another apple i can't remember i think i ordered a nova mac i can't remember but that's what i think and i'm going to put it here and i'm going to move this um pear tree this pear tree and this pear tree were planted at exactly the same time look how much this was in a better spot look how much bigger and healthier it is right that was in a spot with poor drainage and poor sun this was in a spot with better drainage and better sun look at the difference spindly and small big and strong uh, anyway i don't know if this pear will self-pollinate a lot of fruit trees you kind of need two varieties um, but i want to have apples <laughs> i want to put an apple tree here so i gotta move this pear i have no idea where i'm gonna put it i might i might even just put it outside the garden enclosure and just sort of leave it to fend for itself maybe i'll put some sort of fence around it um, it's got to be nearby to help this one pollinate but uh I just don't have room for four trees in this garden. I got room for three trees. Barely room for three trees. That's it, right? And along here, I don't know what Willie is going to do, but I think they'll do fine, right? I got these um, oh, hascap berries. Starting, they're starting to leaf out now, right? So, so I got hascap berry here, hascap berry here, and this one was moved, but it's there. This is uh, Saskatoon. Uh, doing pretty good it's a little bit tight here but oh well you know and somewhere around here i've got a lovage plant that hasn't shown up yet but there is a lovage plant here i'm hoping it pokes through the ground lovage is sort of a perennial celery type plant right great thing to have in your garden i got one here somewhere just don't know where it is up here in this bed on the hill <laughs> uh not the city on the hill the bed on the hill uh, I've got some uh, French sorrel. Some people were asking me if the uh, deer and animals get at it. Deer walk right by this all the time. They don't seem to ever want it. Uh, this time of year, the sorrel actually tastes pretty good. This is probably the best time of year to eat it. Um, you know, they, they, the whole plant gets about two, three feet high. But this time of year, you can eat a few leaves in there. I mean, they get, it gets more and more bitter as the, as the season progresses. But this time of year, the leaves actually are quite... They're very... Um, lemony i would i would say is the um not exactly they have an acidity to them right but they're quite nice anyway these are growing and i've planted sun chokes here this is where the sun chokes are going to be it's really sunny right it's a bed where I, i've always found it tough to get things to grow here i'm not exactly sure why if it's drainage or whatever i got good soil here um there's too much water and not enough but the sun choke is the most invincible plant in the world it'll grow in anything and it's a really sunny spot so i thought why not grow sun chokes here right and that'll also sort of keep them from taking over my garden a little bit of a bird's eye view type type thing just to give you a, some perspective right so you can see the wood chips the fruit garden right and over here sand vegetable garden and then this massive pond in the center of it all in the least productive part of the garden shady and too shady and too wet to grow anything i mean things would grow here but it's lousy right so now we've got a nice pond right so i'm really excited and i, I got a lot of work to do to make this pond self-sustaining it's just a hole in the ground there's no liner there's no nothing right um i gotta bring some different ditch plants in and get some natural things growing in it and get the uh cloudiness dealt with um you know that's a another Whole nother video, whole nother topic. Uh, really easy fix. Um, but eventually this will be like this sort of really nice um, centerpiece. I mean, none of this matters for growing vegetables, but it is nice to have a pleasant place to be when you're in your garden. And of course, you notice the bench is not in the garden. I'm, I'm just staining that and cleaning it up sort of thing uh, so it doesn't rot. Um, so that is, 
The bench will be back in the garden for the next garden tour. Nothing I enjoy more than working really hard and then sitting on that bench and having a cold beer. <laughs> I just love it, right? Or coming out with my coffee and sort of just sitting there for a minute and thinking, what am I going to do today? Um, but yeah, we put a lot of work into the garden. I'm really happy with the way everything's looking and I fully expect to have a fantastic garden this year because I'm making the I think I'm making the best use of the space so anyway that's where we are April 2023 a lot of changes in the garden all for the better I hope <laughs> a lot of work left to do but the hard stuff's done from my point of view I've done like everything that needed to happen to do all these changes it was all hard stuff and I didn't do it all myself I had my kids helping me and there's two young guys down the street um, they're sort of like One's a university student, the other's a high school student. I had them help me a couple times. Um, they helped me do, they, they, they dug the hole in the pond for the most part. I did some digging, but they dug like, I don't know, 80% sort of thing, right? Um, they did a lot of the heavy stuff, right? They helped me out a lot. And I mean, I'm just talking, I paid two guys. I think I had them over here a couple days, basically a couple days work. So I gave two, two teenagers, couple of days work I paid them really well for their time um, and they saved my back and we got so much done um, you know because when you got two people like that working for you you've got to keep them busy and also just being around young people it really inspires you to sort of work a little harder and try to keep up you don't want to feel uh, old <laughs> so <laughs> I had a lot done I mean if there had been three of me here I wouldn't have got nearly that much done because I was trying to work follow the pace you know, of a 17 year old, a really in shape day workout and stuff like that, right? Of trying to, follow, trying to match the pace of what the 17 year old can do. Uh, so it was a really, really productive time. I'm glad I paid them. Um, and I mean, all of your views and your sharing of my videos and all that sort of stuff, that helps make all that possible as well, right? Because I don't have to really agonize over the money. I can just pay them because it's, it's all gonna work itself out. Um, when I get the money from YouTube and that sort of thing. So thank you so much for being uh, viewers of my channel for uh, You know when you can buying things from my sponsors that helps and uh, for those of you who subscribe to my Substack page Especially paid subscriber. Thanks a lot. That's great I'm gonna keep pumping those articles out once a month or once sorry once a week. So anyway, that's where we are I hope you found this interesting. If you did, please like, share, subscribe, and until next time, get out there, get at it, have fun in your garden. Thanks for watching. Hey, if you want to help support everything I'm doing here, go to Vessies.com to buy whatever you need for your garden this year. And use my coupon code GAVS23 to get free shipping as long as there's a pack of seeds in the order and there's no oversized items in the order. Check out the description box of this video for details. You can buy everything you need from Vessies. They have seeds, fruit bushes and trees, soil amendments, pest solutions, tools, clothing, and lots of other stuff too. So yeah, if you want to help support everything I'm doing here and they sell something you need, buy it from them using my coupon code and happy gardening.